And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. God bless you and welcome to Sounds of Revival a program brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center here in the city of Indianapolis. Thank God for the sound of revival that is in the world today. God has a word for his people. The word revive actually means, of course, to revive something that is dead. And we can understand that God has a revival message for his people. You can look at the world today and see that the world is in trouble. Not only is the world in trouble, not only are unsaved people in trouble, but saints are in trouble because we have actually backed up and lost our first love in many instances. So God has called his body back to him. So that's a wonderful thing. It would be bad if God just let us go on as we were, but God is calling us back because he loves us. And uh, prior to going into the Word for today, I have a book I want to t tell you about. It's entitled, Lord, Teach Us to Pray. After I tell you about this book, I'll be right back. God bless. And I want to make an offer for you today, a book that I've written entitled, Lord, Teach Us to Pray. And this book can be sent to you for any amount. You just send it to our uh, ministry, the P.O. Box number on your um, screen. And this book will really be a blessing to you because actually we're dealing with the Lord's Prayer, but how it was actually spoken in the Greek. It was written in Greek. Therefore, we have actually looked into the Greek language and brought out some very important things about the Lord's Prayer that are not actually in the King James Version, but the original Lord's Prayer and the words that were spoken was, was, is really going to be a blessing and a revelation to you. So order this book today. Send any amount, and um, we will send this book to you, and it will be a blessing to you. Because remember, we need God to teach us how to pray. And this book gives us insight as to how God teaches us how to pray and how to talk to him. God bless. All right, God bless you. And be sure to order that book because we all need to know more about prayer. And as I tell people many times, even when I am in prayer at church or at home, private or in public, I, I am in prayer school. Whenever I start to pray, I am in prayer school because God has so much he wants to talk to us about, so much he wants to reveal us to him, reveal us about him. So he teaches us about himself. Even in prayer, God wants to talk to us. How does God reveal himself to us through the word of God and through prayer? God will talk to us in prayer. That's a wonderful thing. What an opportunity, what a blessing, and God himself will talk to us. And, you know, I like the fact that we have to um, grow in God and how God reveals himself to us on a daily, continual basis, more and more about God. And there's a song that we used to sing. It's t called Higher Ground. And um, basically, it talks about the fact that um, we want to go higher in God. We want to go deeper in the things of God. So the song says, um, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. We do want to go to higher ground, don't we? We want God to lift us to places that we had never even been before. Why? Because he is a God of change, a God who takes us into deeper things, higher things. The topic for today is going to be taken from the book of um, Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 1. 
And the writer said this in verse number one. He said, um, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Note that who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, so the topic deals with belief and basically the gospel was brought to the world by Jesus Christ, right? In the book of St. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, also in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 3, they say virtually the same thing. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What was he talking about there? Again, there is a word of the kingdom, about the kingdom that God had to give to the world. But now listen to this. Let's go back to the topic. Because actually, the topic is, is um, the same thing that's written in the Bible. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Jesus, the arm of God, the presence of God, the power of God, sent on earth to show men the will of God. All right, so who hath believed our report? What we're saying here, in order for you to walk in what God has for you, to remember John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Note that word, believe again. Whosoever believe upon him, because sometimes we look at Jesus Christ and we can give mental assent, but that does not mean we believe in him. Belief and faith is more than just mental assent. Basically, the Bible says in the book of James, glory to God, that um, James chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, faith without works is dead. So if you believe God, then you're going to act on that belief. Sometime, of course, we look at the scripture in the book of Romans chapter number 10, verse 8, 9, and 10, and we take that too lightly. Again, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, 9, and 10, it says this, the word is nigh thee. Verse number 8, Romans chapter 10, the word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. And then he goes on to say, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what we're saying is that you can confess something, but it has to be in your heart. It has to be in your spirit, man. So sometimes you can confess Jesus, but yet you are not really a partaker of what he's all about because you're not, that faith is not there to back it up. So what is faith? Faith has to be developed. Faith has to grow. Remember Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, the Bible said this, By grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So when God began to speak to you, faith comes alive in you. Because see, when you were, before you were born again, faith was dead. But when you were born again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are new, and all things are of God. You're born again. You're a new creation, a new creature. You're born. Life has come back into you. Now, but life did not come back into your head. It came back into your spirit, man. Your spirit, man, was born again. The inner man connected back up with God. Now you serve him, as Paul said, in the book of um, Romans chapter 1, verse 9, I serve God with my spirit. If you're not careful, even after you're born again, you, you will lapse into a state of trying to serve God with your head. And therefore, you will begin to feed your head, natural thing, but you forget to, speed, to feed your spirit man spiritual food. So therefore, you might have been born by the power of God and by the spirit of God, but therefore, if you're not careful, we will attempt to walk with God 
with our heads and not with our hearts. Glory to God. Jesus made a profound statement on one occasion. He said, there's a people that praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They have lapsed back into a state when they were once born again, yet if they're not careful, if they don't keep the Spirit of God flowing into them, because when the Spirit of God comes to your life, Faith comes into you. What we're saying here, your faith needs to be kept alive. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse number 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1, verse 21, 22 said this, that uh, you are born again, not of corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed. By the word of God, which live in the body of favor. Okay? 1 Peter 1.23 again. 1.23, 1 Peter, being born again, talk about Christian, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which live in the body of favor. That's how you are born again. That's how you are delivered from death back into life. That's when life took on a new meaning. That's when you became a new creature by the word of God. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So you are born again by the word of God. And also remember, that infused faith in you. Faith came alive. Again, by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Bottom line, when you were born again, God gave you faith. But that faith, you were made a steward of that faith. In other words, now what are you going to do with the faith that God has given you? You have to learn how to develop it. Sometimes people make faith more complicated than it really is. Sometimes people say, uh, oh, I want more faith. How do I get more faith? What is faith? Faith is just basically a gift from God which he gives to you when you're born again. And from that point on, in order for you to let your faith grow, see, the Bible said in the book, Glory to God, Thessalonians, he told the church, your faith groweth exceedingly. Faith is supposed to grow. On more than one occasion, Jesus talked to people, and the apostle Paul and the apostle Peter and the apostle in the book of Jude talked to people and said, your faith is, is, is not what it should be. You got baby faith. Your faith is about ready to die. Why? Because you have not cultivated it. You have not let it be built up. Remember Romans 10, 17. Let's keep this very simple. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So therefore, hearing God speak to you, God talking to you. When we say hearing by the word of God, that means God has a relationship with you. That he, he's able to talk to you. He's able to speak to you. Hallelujah. And remember John chapter 10, verse 27, the Bible said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Why? His sheep, because God likes to talk to you. God likes to speak to you. God likes to reveal himself to you. He will talk to you as friend with friend, just like he talked to Abraham. The Bible said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Glory to God. The Bible also says in the book of Proverbs, he said, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Again, Jesus said, I call you friends. Glory to God. Because a servant does not know what a master do, does. But I'm calling you friends. So therefore, we are on a friendship. We are on a speaking turn with God. But you see, in order for us to be on speaking terms with God, we have to put ourselves in a position for God to speak to us. James chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible said this, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. What would that mean? And another thing, let's that, talk about prayer. You talk to God, and he'll talk to you. Amen. But if you don't talk to God, he won't talk to you. In other words, you have to come before God and let him Come before him and say, Lord, here I am for you to talk to me. God, here I love you. You begin to praise him. And then when you begin to open up the channel of communication through praise, and when you come before God, just like Jesus gave us the example, prayer, in the book of Rome, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, he said, you know, they said, teach us to pray. And the first part of Jesus' prayer was praise. Remember, the Bible says, Psalm 100, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Come before him praising him. That's how you start your prayer off. Remember that even in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer will start off with thanksgiving and praise. Remember Matthew 6, again, verse 9, teach us to pray. And then he said, this is how the prayer starts off. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
And then he began to praise him. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hallowed, glorious, powerful, mighty be thy name. His prayer started all with praise. And when he began to praise God, then the atmosphere was broken up. And that was an inroad, a door was open for God to deal with him. So prayers, the Bible says, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Again, the Bible says in, Psalm, in the book of Psalm 147, Psalm 148 as well, says this, let the high praise of God be in your mouth as a two-edged sword in your hand. Praise is very important. Begin your talk with God through praise. And then, guess what? Faith can come alive also because God will begin to reveal himself to you. So again, this word believe, and let's go back to the topic here, taken from Isaiah 53 and 1. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Again, when Jesus Christ comes to your life, faith comes as a gift. You didn't do anything, but God said, I'm giving it to you. But also, faith is a stewardship. Now that God has entrusted you with that seed of faith, any type of seed, you have to water it, and you have to um, feed it, and you have to develop it so it can grow. So therefore, faith grows by you putting yourself in a position for God to speak to you and lead you and guide you. Like the Bible said in the book of Psalm 16, verse 11, listen to this now. It's still talking about faith. Believe, who had believed our report? All right, Psalm 16, 11. Thou wilt show, the first clause, thou wilt show me the path of life. You know, Life, how are you going to get through this life? Here it is. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So when you come before God and have an intimate relationship with him through prayer, spending time with him, and by the way, don't, not coming in God's presence, time in him, come in, don't, don't, don't bring your stopwatch, in, in, in the prayer room, okay? <laughs> and we do that. Well, God, I give you 10 minutes to talk because I've got something else to do. I've got other people to talk to. I'm busy today. Um, don't do that. That's not prayer. That's an offense. That's an affront to God. That, that um, grieves the Holy Spirit. So I'm talking about the prayer that you say, God, if you want me, I'll be here all day. If God called, let's say, for example, you wake up in the morning and you feel the anointing God up on you, and you just feel God really wants to communicate with you. What you do, you don't tell God, God, hurry up because you know I've got to be to work at 8 o'clock. Sometimes I know people who, who have done this because when they woke up in the morning and felt the presence of God so strong, they knew God was up to something. They knew God was up to something, and he, and he wanted to be with them more than 10 or 15 minutes, but he wanted to spend an hour with them. So what they did... When they woke up in the morning and sensed, now they were getting ready for work, but they sensed the Spirit of God drawing them into him. They just called in on the job and said, I'm not coming in today. Like, give me one of them vacation days, where they, one of them sick days. Well, you wasn't saying, yeah, I'm sick and tired of sick and tired of being sick and tired of this life. I, I need some real life in me. Just call them say, I'm not coming in today for whatever reason. They, they've done that. Because they sensed that the Holy Spirit was wooing them and that prayer time would be to be a time of ecstasy and intimacy with God, a time of friend talking with you as with friend. Glory to God. A time to build up your faith. Because remember, when God talks to you through the written word or the spoken word, then your faith is built up. Let me go back to this very simple scripture that most people know, but they really don't, don't know it because they don't put it to practice. Romans 10, 17, faith comes. You want more faith? Sure you do. Hey, the bigger your faith, the greater thing you can do, you can receive from God. Amen. A weak faith, you don't get very much. Glory to God. Remember the Bible said the prayer of faith, you say to sick? Okay. Um, so you want your faith to grow. You want big faith. And so faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So putting yourself in, the, in a position, in the atmosphere for God to hear. Hey, God does not just talk to you in any atmosphere or every now and then. That's the exception rather than the rule. That's why it says that we have 
a place like the secret place of the Most High, coming before him, giving him time, honoring him, and then he'll honor you. Honoring him was taking a break from the cares and the troubles of this life, care and say, I got to put everything aside, give God top priority, give God some real time, okay? I'm talking about some real prayer time that, that he can really um, convey his truth to you. He can really open up to you. He can give you a line up on line. What he, really, he can give you full, total instructions about what he wants you to do and what he wants to do for you. Amen. Like, for example, sometimes we read the Bible, and what we, what we do, we speed read. Amen. The faster, the better. Well, that's kind of like how we take our prayer life sometimes. We just want to zip through microwave prayer time, and then we feel, and we say, God's not going to talk to you like that. You're going to get bits and pieces, and you need more than bits and pieces of the will of God, and you need to know everything God wants you to know. Because that's crucial, that's important. That's a matter of life and death. You're hearing from God. Again, but that's how your faith is, is built up. When you come to the presence of a holy God and hear his voice, there's something about the voice of God that can't be explained. There's something about the voice of God that's communed to us through his word. It builds faith, it builds trust, and you will be like Mary. Glory to God in the book of St. Luke, chapter number um, 1, verse 37 and 38. The angel came to Mary and said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Because when you, again, are in his presence, you just, you just believe God for anything. But in order for you to have that faith to be able to believe God for anything, then you have to be a frequent visitor, a frequent, um, in a frequent place of coming before him and just having no agenda I just want to hear the voice of God. I just want to, I just want God to talk to me. I just want to hear what he has to say. And that's how you get faith. Faith, basically, you're not going to get faith unless you have become intimate with God. That's the bottom line. See, sometimes our relationship can be very cold, distant, our relationship with God. We think because we're saved and because we are Christians, uh, no, you have to build on that. Ooh, you have to walk with God, and you have to, again, make his presence, time spent with him. That's where, where your faith is going to build up, okay? Bottom line, people say, I want more faith. Sometimes people worry about faith, and they, and they become um, anxious about, oh, do I have enough faith? What am I going to do? Hey, it's very simple. The Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Paul said this, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 3. Paul said, I fear lest by any means as the serpent, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm going to quote that again. 2 Corinthians chapter number uh, 3, verse 2. Paul said this, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Don't make your faith walk kind It's simple. Don't get too deep on God. It's simple. Walking with God is simple. Talking with God is simple. Just take time off of God. That's real simple. David says, Psalm 31, verse 15, my times are in your hands. Amen. You don't own yourself. You don't own your schedule. Psalm 90, glory to God, the writer said this, Lord, teach us. To, verse 12, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible said, redeem the time because the days are evil. Make some time for God. Amen. That's the best um, day part of your life. Time with God. Amen. Don't miss that. You want your faith to grow? Then walk with God. If you want your faith to grow, well, your faith, remember the Bible said in the book of um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, faith worketh by love. What do you mean? 
when you walk with God in love, like you enjoy being with him, when you enjoy being in his presence, when you enjoy just sitting and just listening, waiting on God, just, just to be with him, you don't have to just, just to be in his presence, then faith, Galatia, faith will start to work. Faith will grow. Your faith will be big. You will be a faith giant just by being in the presence of God. Don't, don't complicate things. And anybody that you see in, in our time or in time past who we call faith giants, you ask them, hey, what is your secret? They will tell you they spend time with God. That's the most important uh, um, thing in their life, being in God's presence. Hallelujah. In thy presence is full of joy. So let's, let's get uncomplicated here. And, but see, people want to be faith giants. They want to walk by faith, but they separate them. But they don't like, they don't really, they have, they fall out of love with God. But you can get that relationship back with him. You can get that intimacy back with him. Well, God is your first love, not your second love, not your third love, not your part-time lover, not your boyfriend. He is your husband. Glory to God. You are married. You are one. That's why no, this could happen in our lives. Revelation 2, 4. Jesus said, I have someone against you because you left your first love. You don't love God. Like, you, you, we're in love with the movies, in love with TV, in love with shopping, in love with our grandchildren, and in love with our cousin, and in love with this, and in love with that, in love with our job. Amen. And Jesus talks about that also. So just be encouraged. Let's kind of relo let's get relocated again. Come back to God. Luke 10, 27, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. All, loving God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, all of our mind. Then faith can rise. Faith can move that mountain. Mark 11, 22, 23, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. But the first clause said, have faith in God. You want mountain moving faith? Praise God. Well, just fall in love with Jesus all over again. My goodness, hallelujah. Faith is not hard, but sometimes if you're not careful, you're running from faith. When you run from God, you're running from faith. But let's run to faith. Run to God, the God of faith, who is the God of love. Remember, the Bible says God is love. That's what God is all about. And then after you find out, you talk and learn the God of love, then you learn the God of faith. Who? Anybody here want to be a giant for God? You want to be big for God? Then be big on walking in love with God. All right, God bless you, and we hope to talk to you next time. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Worship Sunday at 1030 a.m. and 6 p.m. Tuesdays at 730 p.m. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD or DVD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.